trials. So do you find that people come back time and again, and do they come in groups or individually? Uh, kind of uh, all across the board. We Again, we tend to do a lot of tourist uh, throwing, so most of those are going to be just one time as they're in town for a special event or for a vacation. Uh, we do have league play, and that's for uh, those folks that – get into it quite heavily and we do have a, a large number of those that find such therapy out of that throwing because while it doesn't require a whole lot of skill it does allow you to get out some exertion and frustrations out so you know an hour of throwing can be quite uh, therapeutic as it would be um, and then folks that really get into it with the one hand throw then want to see if they can achieve the same level of competency with the two hand throw, the underhand throw, and from there, once they get there, then we can kind of give them the advanced techniques of getting up much closer to the line and doing a heavy flick to uh, instead of using your body, it's just your wrist to get it in there. And uh, but we we do have quite a bit of repeat customers just because it's that entertaining and it's that unusual from most sports and activities that you might otherwise do on a date night or Friday night. Very cool. So um, with league play, are, are there enough organizations now spreading that leagues can be more than just local? Yes. They're, they're right now there are two main uh, national bodies that both do league play. Uh, all of the clubs of which it went from just a couple dozen when we first started to now, they're probably closer to 100, if not over 100 around the U.S. that are all part of one of those two organizations uh, and each of those have some interoperability. So if someone from Charlotte happened to be over in Asheville, they could come into our club and throw with our league and it would count towards their league because we all use the same cool. rules, the same format, the same uh, requirements for equipment. So that's kind of the fun part of it is, you know, you can boast because you know that everyone else is using the exact same axe, the exact same target distance and, exact same material so it's apples to apples and not you know different different uh, standards very cool so do you think like with other some other sports that haven't yet i mean this is a fairly new sport as a sort of organized activity is there are there aspirations to put this in the olympics uh, not that i've heard of yet but you know if they can add skateboarding and mountain biking and some of the other craziness in there, nothing would surprise me. Uh, it it does require a certain, a certain skill set, and once you see uh, it's actually, I don't know if you've ever been on late night ESPN or some of the other sports channels, they'll show some of the competitions, and the guys and girls that are playing will hit 25 bullseyes in a row. They're that good at it. So it mm. does require, you know, once you get past, the basic ability to hit the entire wood target, but to hit that small center instead, um, it takes a, a quite a bit of skill to, to get to that level. So it could be there one day. Mm. Well, you know, uh, from I have to admit, I've I've become addicted to the TV series called Outlander, which uh, it deals with Highlanders from Scotland, who, in fact, uh, many of whom moved to North Carolina. And there's Highlands, North Carolina. There's Tryon, and they have the uh, Grandfather Mountain. Apparently, except for this year because of COVID, they have the annual Highland Games. So, is axing part of that? Do you know? Are you able to participate in that once it? returns I, I haven't heard of it uh specifically in the highland games is an event uh i wouldn't be surprised as it does sort of tend to attract that same manly manliness uh that the games do with throwing logs and boulders and you know some of the <laughs> more entertaining options but if they were to offer or ask we'd be happy to pop over there and show them what we have to offer yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, you mentioned different skill sets in terms of throwing and technique with axe throwing, but I know you've got a three person uh, ownership partnership and each of you have very distinct skills. So uh, tell us, uh, you mentioned Amy Zimmerman already with her aesthetic and design uh, skill set. Um, anything else from her? And then who's your third partner? Well, it, it started out as a crazy idea with me, but I knew ahead of time what my limitations and what my strengths were. Uh, so I sort of sat down and tried to figure out what skill sets would be needed for such a venture. 
uh, I'm personally more into obviously computer software administration. My strength is more in the boring logic, hiring, firing, coming up with rules, paying the bills, <laughs> stuff that most people are terribly bored by, but that that's where my interests lie. Oddly enough, uh, Amy filled the slot beautifully of what we needed for someone who had skills with social media as social media is massive these days with getting the name out and really keeping right. yourself known to the community and uh, even online further out for our online bookings. So she was quite good with social media. She has worked in the events industry. So she helps with private parties, getting set up for birthday celebrations, the bachelorette parties, bachelor parties. So her skill set really involves the, the heavy client interaction and the wow factor so that when people come in, mm -hmm. it's even different from other axe throwing clubs that they, they, you know, if they've thrown before, we get a lot of, wow, this is not like the ones we've been to. That's what Amy brings to the, to the picture. And then the last one is Ryan, who is my cousin. He's the handyman. He's the one that actually is building the lanes, designing the lanes, building the targets, figuring out, you know, how to put the nuts and bolts together. So I sort of come up with a crazy idea. He'll tell me how dumb it is. I'll adjust my idea accordingly. He'll tell me it's less dumb. And then finally, by my third or fourth <laughs> iteration, he'll tell me that one's workable. And then he actually does it and puts it all together, whereas I would have no idea how to proceed. So between the three of us, we're able to kind of cover all of our needs and you know, anything that's not directly in one of our wheelhouses, we mm -hmm. share between the three of us. And we'll be able to either figure out who we'd need to talk to or make a decision with just the three of us. So it's, it's worked out quite nicely to have a team that, you know and trust and has such amazingly talented folks. Fantastic. That's wonderful. And then just so you know, we're talking with Glenn Merchant at Throw Axville, A X E V I L E dot com, based outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Now Glenn, our time is almost up here, but I did want to ask you about the Axe of Kindness, A X E of Kindness. Uh, describe some of the programs that your organization and you three support. Well, we've tried to uh, put some of the community back in mind um, as we were doing this, uh, and we were sort of getting that ramped up when we got hit with a pandemic, so we didn't get a chance to implement ah. a whole lot. But prior to that, um, one of the things that we do is we help support uh, one of the local wildlife uh, centers that helps you know rehab injured animals. They have a wood-burning stove, and it turns out we use a lot of wood, so yeah, every week to two weeks, I pile up all the old target boards, everything we have, drive it over to them, and they're able to keep their entire compound warmed because through the winters, that's what sustains their uh, operation and keeps it warm for all the animals. So that was kind of a nice thing that we were able to help out someone that helped us as well, but that we all benefit from it, and the wood gets two or three lifetimes worth of use. Uh, we've also helped collect food uh, from the local mana bank to try to encourage you know those to help others who are less able to help themselves at certain times um, some of the other things we're planning on doing once we get back going is we are going to figure out a way to allow different employees to pick a different charity each month that we'd be able to you know take a certain percentage of our income for that month and donate it to their charity of choice to make sure that it's not just something that we believe in it's something that everyone else gets to take part in and uh, feel that they've got that, some valued input. That's fantastic. And even your customers, I understand with the Mana Food Bank, you, you have customers, or when you're open again, when the uh, pandemic uh, allows, um, you have customers bring in food, which then allows them to be in drawings to have additional time um, out on at the target. So that's it's inclusive, as you said, and really bringing a sense of community. So I really want to thank you, Glenn, because... You've taken what's a craze and a fad and, you know, you've turned it into something much more than just, um, you know, a place to go to get your frustrations out. Although, as you said, yes, it's a good stress buster and cathartic. But if you're looking for a different date night, if you're looking for a way to release your inner lumberjack, perhaps, or even corporate trainings, catering and special events, whether they be birthdays, hen parties, bachelor parties, and so on, you know, uh, throwaxville.com is the place to go and ably led by you, Glenn, and Amy and Ryan. So thanks so much for being here with us today on Living Legacy Leadership. We're really grateful. 
I appreciate you having me, and uh, you have yourself a great evening. Well, thank you. And just a reminder to our listeners that the life you live is the legacy you'd leave. Thanks so much for being here with us and uh, check out the archive shows on sobradionetwork.com and also check out my business website, gamechangerthinking.com. Thanks a lot. And um, as they say in your industry, get your ax over there and be an expert. Oh, dear. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.